I was tempted to call this the lust letter section because I'm a big fan of alliteration and that has an alluring sound. But I decided it's too misleading. Lust alone usually doesn't lend to substantial acts such as letter writing. It's a fleeting emotion. It reaches its boiling point quickly and evaporates soon after it's satisfied. It's unlikely you'd ever take the time to write a sexually charged letter for someone you only lusted after, as these letters are filled with very personal and potentially embarrassing information that you'd only want someone you trusted to have access to. This is not to say lust is always a devious emotion. When it's accompanied by the melodious orchestra of love, it finds a more meaningful and extended purpose. It's a common assumption that love and lust are ardent enemies, and they are rarely recognized for working together and even keeping each other alive. After all, we must credit lust and desire for pushing us past the platonic point and encouraging us to take romantic interest in someone. Then once a relationship is established, love is what holds you together when lust takes one of her many leaves. And when love is at its most challenging, sometimes a moment of unassigned passion can reignite your union. The idea of love and lust working together as partners came together long ago in the Greek word eros, hence erotic, which literally means sexual love. In order to experience complete eros, you need to lust after the one you love. For married couples and long-term partners, sex is the relationship within the relationship that comes with its own set of joys and complications. If all is going well except for the sex, then all isn't going well. On the flip side, if sex is the only link you have, then you don't have an authentic bond. Oftentimes, if it was the thing that brought you together, it can also be the thing that drives you apart. It's easy to overlook the importance of sex because outside of a relationship, it's readily misused. But on the inside, it's the cornerstone connection. As time goes by, this connection becomes more difficult and therefore more important to make. Here's the part where letters come in handy. Sex is tricky because while you want to get to the point where you know exactly what your lover's like, exactly what your lover likes, you don't want things to become so familiar that they're trite and routine. Putting your passions on paper is a great way to update your lover on your latest fantasies and to praise them for the many ways they please you. There are two types of erotic letters, the creation and the recreation. The creation letter is the fantasy letter. You're telling your devoted one what you'd like to happen, what you saw in a movie or dreamed up in the doctor's office and can't wait to try. The recreation is the exciting recollection of a successful sexual escapade you can't stop thinking about. Truth be told, I've never written an entirely erotic letter. I've included erotic sentiments in love letters and also goodbye in breakup letters. Hey, why not? <laughs> I include them here, however, for two reasons. One, I think they're important. Two, I plan to write them. As I said, these types of letters tend to support relationships, and I haven't been in one of those in longer than I care to admit. So the letter you're about to read is the only letter in the book that is completely fabricated. Since so much of sex is fantasy-based anyway, I'm hoping you'll let me get away with it. Now for the fun part. The pseudonym for my pseudo-man is Oliver. He's roughly 6'4 with washboard abs, obviously. <laughs> we'll meet running in Central Park one day. He'll be in town because he's teaching atmospheric and planetary science at Columbia, <laughs> which is what he does when he's between projects for NASA. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I must have gotten carried away. Anyway, the erotic letter. Oliver, what got into you last night? Whatever it was, I'm glad it got into me, too. My hopes of a late-night tryst fell asleep with you on the couch. I admitted defeat and headed to get ready for bed. Needless to say, I was in a state of complex confusion as my dress went up, panties came down, and I found myself holding onto the headboard for dear life. I was the victim of a series of surprises, my favorite being when you insisted me on top of you, and as I started to spread my legs, you slid down quickly to lick me from beneath. As much as I loved when you did that, I must admit I found it slightly, just slightly, more pleasurable when we switched places and you were on top, leaning back to play with my pussy while kneeling over and letting me suck on your sweetness. You know I never liked that position until I realized how much you enjoyed the view. I imagine you liked the noise, too, my would-be moans muffled directly by your cock. It must sound like torture when I come. And aren't you kind to note that one of my favorite places is standing and facing against the wall like some naughty ingenue, where you can taunt so easily, leaving one hand free to do its will with my tender nipples and lucid clit, while the other holds my hands high above my head and ensures my wrists are cinched and in a certain amount of pain. 
You took a while to relieve the pain last night, motioning to put yourself inside several times and deciding not to, knowing that I drip wetter and ache more then and now with every tease. I feared you might be gentle about it, but you sent me straight to my tiptoes and gasping for air when you finally did push yourself inside. Afterwards, I collapsed in exhaustion. This is my preferred brand of exhaustion, by the way. Much better than the generic stuff. I'm meeting Julie after work for a drink. I won't be long. Restlessly, Samara. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, the next letter that I'm going to read is not in my book. None of James Joyce's letters are in my book. However, the story behind James, Joyce, James Joyce's erotica and the reason um, his letters are not allowed to be reprinted and the controversy they have caused, that story is in my book, which I realize is a shameless plug for the book. The story is also on my website if you don't want to commit to the whole book. That's letterlover.net. And you just click on the words <laughs> Stephen Joyce, and the story is there. Um, but the last time I was here, I did read a James Joyce letter, but there are nine to choose from, so I chose another one, and I thought of Rachel when I picked this, because I know what a big fan she is of spanking. <laughs> this is written um, by James to his wife, Nora, on December 15th, 1909. The time will fly now, my darling, until your loving, tender arms encircle me. I will never leave you again. Not only do I want your body, as you know, but I also want your company. My darling, I suppose that compared with your splendid, generous love for me, my love for you looks very poor and threadbare. But it is the best I can give you, my own dear sweetheart. Take it, my love. Save me and shelter me. I am your child, as I told you, and you must be severe with me, my little mother. Punish me as much as you like. I would be delighted to feel my flesh tingling under your hand. Do you know what I mean, Nora? I wish you would smack me or even flog me. Not in play, dear, in earnest and on my naked flesh. I wish you were strong, strong, and had a big, full, proud bosom and big, fat thighs. I would love to be whipped by you, Nora. I would love to have done something to displease you, something trivial, perhaps one of my rather dirty habits that make you laugh. And then to hear you call me into your room and then find you sitting in an armchair with your fat thighs far apart and your face deep red with anger and a cane in your hand. To see you point at what I had done and then with a movement of rage pull me towards you and throw me face down across your lap. Then to feel your hands tearing down my trousers and inside my clothes and turning up my shirt. To be struggling in your strong arms and in your lap to feel you bending down like an angry nurse whipping a child's bottom until your big full bubbies almost touched me and to feel you flog, flog, flog me viciously on my naked quivering flesh. Pardon me, dear, if this is silly. <laughs> I began this letter so quietly and yet I must, I must end it in my own mad fashion. 